Grand rising, grand rising, grand rising. Curvies, happy Saturday. It's springtime, y'all. Spring is sprung and so has married to medicine. It's over. It's over. It's over. That's a wrap. And we're here to wrap it up. I hope you smash that like button, smash the subscribe button on your way in. If you haven't already, go ahead and ring that bell so you can get notified next time I upload a video. And of course, so you can become part of this beautiful curvy community that we're growing over here in these YouTube streets. You know, um, I'm so thankful that you guys all woke up with me this morning. Lynn Seller was first in the house, left me some alphabet soup. I appreciate you. And Miss Kiki, thank you for coming through. I am so glad you decided to come up and spend this morning. Yes, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And you know, I have been so intrigued with this season of Married to Medicine. As always, it's the best show on Bravo, IMO. And, um, you know, they didn't really get to what they usually get to, which is the reconciliation that makes... Uh, Married to Medicine, so beautiful, is how all that critical thinking with those critical thinking minds is able to come full circle and usually find a way to move forward in a positive direction. Zeline Turner's in the house. Thank you for coming through. I appreciate you. Yes, it's a wrap. Um, and so I'm thinking that maybe they're in a different place this season. Maybe they're in a different place. And everything has seasons, you guys. Everything has seasons. You know what the Bible says? There's a time and a season for all the stuff, right? So perhaps this was just a season of unrest and leftover stuff for next season um, on Married to Medicine this time. And I am still very thankful that each and every one of these couples has taken the time out of their lives to, they're busy. They're freaking doctors. They're saving lives. They're helping life get here. All kinds of stuff, easing your pain, helping with your membranes, all kinds of stuff. And they took time out of their busy lives to share those busy lives with us, you know? Let me make, let me test my sound real quick. Yes, so, and I just want to say thank you to the cast of Married to Medicine. You know, I come over here and I say my little stuff and I jab my little jaws. But all in all, look, it is a good experience to have insight into Black professional families. I, To me, this show is like a reality show about how to be a Huxtable. I mean, what Cosby did aside, or what they say he did aside, um is one thing, but the image that that impressed on young melanated minds here in America, where we were able to see ourselves as professionals, we weren't, we weren't, um, shucking and jiving. We weren't, um, you know, the garbage man, like on rock and the wife was a nurse. Remember that show rock? He was a garbage man and she was a nurse. And it wasn't like the, um, and even on the Jeffersons, at least the Jeffersons, he was an entrepreneur. Um, and what other show? Oh, James, they grew up in the projects and then he left for work. And then she practically was a single mom in the projects. Um, so many images I grew up with that showed melanated Americans in subservient positions and you know, blue collar status type work fields. And you know how it goes, that if you see somebody who looks like you'd be able to do something, then it gets in you that that's a doable thing. But when you never see black Jesus walk across the water, when you never see black Jesus go out and heal the masses, when you never see black Jesus do all of the miracles, you don't think that you're capable of doing miracles by proxy. You kind of feel like, oh, that's over there. Just like white presidents. For years, 44 terms, we had all white presidents. And then we get a black one. And now other black, well, melanated, although I don't like the adjectives, 
um, for an assignation of ethnicity. So the other melanated people can now see, oh, look, one of me got in there. That means it's possible. Therefore, I can go too. And not saying that that's a prerequisite for you to conquer things because there are a lot of first people, um, first people groups that do stuff without actually seeing themselves. They are the first and they become who is seen. Getting back to my Huxtable point, to me, the Cosby show showed us the way that these black professional families can interact, love, thrive in America and, you know, and just exist on a professional tier that doesn't have anything to do with me taking out your trash. You see what I'm saying? So that's one of my real, real deep, really seriously authentic appreciations for this show in particular, Married to Medicine, full of melanated excellence, full of melanated love, full of melanated, let's get over it and keep it moving in a positive direction, full of melanated entrepreneurship, full of melanated excellence. Can we give it up to melanin and melanated joy? You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate this show. Now I talk, like I said, I talk my stuff. Everybody gets a nickname. Y'all know I'm good at a nickname. I can make somebody, anybody. Um, but I wanted to start with that is just my utmost thanks for these particular cast. They are the Huxtables for a new generation. And, um, we're going to start someplace a little different. I'll get into the recap in a second, but I really wanted to share with you guys some behind the scenes things from Cecil in particular, because we, we hear from Cecil and you know, he likes to talk to the ladies. Um, but he also actually likes to drop a good live. So let's get, well, I'm going to start here and, oh, let me start with these comments first. Let me get over here. Okay. I said hello to Zeline. And then Stephen Chris goes in the house right on. Thanks for coming through. Sanford and Son, good time. Keeping your head above water. Making a way when you can. Temporary layoff. Good times. Easy way to rip off. Good times. Scrapping and surviving. Good times. Hanging in a rubber. I don't know that one. I just said hanging in a vomit. I don't really know that one, you guys. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sanford and Son, they were practically scavengers, but they were independent entrepreneurs and they were scavengers. So kind of like high class trash men, but they were independent owners. They owned that whole little area. He had that salvage yard and he would be going to meet Elizabeth. Remember? Yes, Cliff Huxtable was Dr. Yes, yes, exactly. Uncle Phil, yes, he was another professional that we got to see. And he, I, I, you know, when he was paired with his dark skinned wife, I thought that was really epic. The way they did Aunt Viv, the original Aunt Viv was, was very colorist and all that stuff. We can deal with that in another show. But still, let's just give it up to the image of Uncle Phil being portrayed as a positive melanated man who's professional college educated, affluent, has a family that he loves and respects and they love and respect him. And that's a great ripple in the universe, you guys. Mademoiselle H, thanks for coming through. Yep, he was a lawyer. Aunt Viv, I'm not sure what did Aunt Viv do? Um, what did the dark Aunt Viv or the light skinned Aunt Viv, what did they do exactly? I don't really remember. Uh, anybody who knows can tell me. Um, I heard Cecil and Eugene doing a podcast. Oh, really? Well, we're going to get into that. Uncle Phil was, a, was he a whole judge? I thought he was a lawyer, y'all. Was Uncle, did he work his way up to judge or did was he a judge? So I could have swore he was just a lawyer. Well, that makes it even more phenomenal. I'm going to have to go watch some reruns. And speaking of reruns, like he was a good dancer on Good Times. You're hanging in the child line. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate my Kirby so much. Hanging in a doorway. <laughs> we can make it anything, you guys. Just say, hanging in a uh-uh. <laughs> Good times. Fresh Prince. Yes. Blackish. You know, now the thing with Blackish 
I appreciate that show. Um, for some other reasons, I do feel like it's a little interesting in some other ways. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting in some other ways. Uh, but I do appreciate any image of solid black family units, solid melanated family units. That's not totally about this struggle love. Um, even though that is very associated with black love quotes, um, the whole struggle about it, you know, we're going to make it no matter what, you know, and I like seeing when that's applied to professional level people, no hanging in the child line, good times. At least we're lucky. We got them. Yep. Good times. Yeah. Aunt Viv was a professor. See another educated woman, educated, critical thinking, melanated excellence. Give it up to all of those images that our young people get to see that have nothing to do with you know, shaking my ass for $5 for some fool that's not even going to protect me properly. Like that's so weird how we even let that happen. But that's a whole other live, you guys. Um, maybe she's a lawyer. Um, well, they said she's a professor. So yeah, let's see. We're going to get into when the name of the show. Yeah, that was good times, right? Rerun D and Roger. That was no, wait, no good times. Damn, what was what's happening? That was what's happening with a uh, rerun and you know reruns wife because he passed on and reruns wife is essie berry and she's hot kind of in the youtube streets um and she actually has a uh, love jones for cat williams my allegedly thing is up yeah she actually has a love jones for Cat Williams, and now that neither one of them is with a relationship, she said she's going to get her man, y'all. She said that on a live some time ago. It was cute. Yeah, what's happening? Yep, what's happening? So here, I'm going to share my screen. Yep, Miss Barry on, yes, yeah, she's on YouTube. And she is into it with, um, of all people, Steve Harvey. She is not happy with Steve's ass, you guys. And she was saying that he was trying to unalive her and stalking her and stuff the other day in a live. You guys might want to go check out her channel and see for yourself. And I'm not sure how Rerun's wife got dragged into the mess. But uh, Essie Berry. Essie Berry. She has a channel in these YouTube streets. Essie Berry. Yeah. She was playing audio. She t she records their phone calls. This is a digression. She replays their phone calls. She records of him calling her late. And it's clearly Steve Harvey's voice. And he's like just kind of like berating her and talking trash to her on the line. And she's constantly saying, well, why'd you try to have me unalived and stuff like that? And yeah, she'd be playing all the audio over there. Essie Berry, you guys. Essie Berry. And, and it's been really hot ever since Cat Williams did his Shannon Sharp interview. Um, yes. So just side, side note. So we're going to start with this one. Um, I did not know that Cecil was doing this and let's take a listen. Are you gonna? What's up? Good people. Good morning. Good morning. Season 10 reunion. Ladies have left super early this morning. They leave around 6 a.m. Now about 9 a.m. Eugene and I are about to head over to the uh, studio. I don't know about the other guys. You know, Eugene and I, we got to get over there and babysit our women. You know, we got to control them. You know, you know, we got to train them up. You know, like Kim was saying, we got to well train them up. So this is season 10. So actually, they don't need any training. But it is difficult for the guys because we sit in the back in the green room and watch. And it's like, like being a parent at a game. I mean, you can't, you can't do anything. All you can do is just hope that they are ready and they do their thing. Eugene kind of put me on blast because this is season 10. He got his suit. I think he's going to be wearing like a blazer. He's all dressed up. I'm in here real casual. As you can see, the casual fit. I went with the casual fit. But hey, you know, it's season 10. This ain't, it ain't nothing new for me. We've been doing it for a while. Should be a great time. It's gonna be exciting to see Letitia on her first reunion. I know my girl Quad will be there. 
I'm sure that's going to be some interesting conversation, to say the least. So, anyway, blog one, or vlog one, not a blog, because I'm not a blogger. This is a vlog, so I'm a vlogger. Vlog one of the reunion, season 10. Cheers. Pray for it, brother. Please pray for it. Okay, so I just wanted us to get a little insight into what was going on in these minds before, during, and after the reunion and how they were feeling going into it. Um, this one, right, that was for episode two. This is for the final one. Right. I think we it's good to see. Down in the lobby. Getting ready to head over to the studio. Uh, a little cold out here in New York, about 40 degrees, but it's a long day. It's going to be probably about. 12 hours or so. Try to set up some dinner reservations from New York, my favorite city. I'm gonna get something good. I'm gonna get out here and get my Keith Lee on, do a little bit of a review to see me. Hey, you see, I got the ATL on, gotta represent, but also, you know, straight from LA. So, anyway, waiting for Eugene to come down now. We're about to head out. Talk to you later. All right. So, him and Eugene be kicking it, you guys. And, um, Yes, he was in the first five minutes of Freak Nick was the picture of him in the first five minutes of Freak Nick. That's his new nickname. So we have Surround Sound and Freak Nick. We have Dr. Gina and, and the Day Drinker. Um, we have mm, Sweet and Sour and Dr. Gross. Um, we have Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Daddy. And we have Dr. Jackie and Dominican Republic. So those are a couple of nicknames. Oh, and then we have uh, Dr. Alicia. We'll just call her sassy. She can be a little sassy. And then her husband, though, I call him the knuckle dragger, you guys, because he seems very antiquated in his views. And I'm just like, dude, you need to eat some stuff if you're going to try to control everything she does. You need, you going to need to eat something. Okay, that's very knuckle draggy. I don't get no extra pleasure and I have to do all this other stuff anyway. So um, I wanted to also show us this before we get into the uh, reunion. Um, well, how should I do this? Because there's a couple of things on here I wanted us to see. Controller should be his name. N yeah, controller, knuckle dragger. I, the controller seems kind of nice. I like knuckle dragger. It really gets my point home. You know, I'm just like, dude, he was, he's going to be dragging her around by her ponytail next. You know what I'm saying? Like, get over here, woman, because I said, yeah. Yes, Dr. Gross. Dr. G is gross to me. I'm positive that's what the G stands for. Yes. The things he said in front of his current wife to his ex-wife and his ex-girlfriend was gross to me. I don't care how socially freaking inept you are as a psychiatrist who's in charge of mental health for other people you should have a freaking clear line on what's acceptable to say and not to say in front of other people sir that was gross and how you treated quad was gross okay yes caveman i like caveman i like it i like it caveman yeah i'd be getting distracted too Oh, you only watch part three of the reunion. I'm not sure. Did I miss a square light? Was that a square light? Was he in the bathroom? I'm not sure. But then let's look at this real quick and then we'll jump into this. Because um, this right here, what we're about to play, will give us insight into what we're about to talk about. Come on, play for us. Do y'all wives know that y'all are here today? Um, yes, of course. How did that go? Well, well, toy, to, well, yeah, you want to start? <laughs> Dr. Simone, as you know, I'm her favorite blogger. So you got to prove to them here. Yes. Were there moments in your marriages where you sort of questioned whether or not this show was healthy enough to sustain your healthy marriage? Year five reunion. And Simone announced that we were getting divorced. As much as this has been a interesting journey, we should have came off of here a year or two before. Obviously, the biggest controversy was that you had a female friend named Tammy. But let me ask you this. Were you ever attracted to Tammy? No. Never. Never. Is she an Never. attractive woman? 
She's an attractive woman. But I mean, you miss Tammy? Mm -hmm. Who do you think on the show is not showcasing their real life? <laughs> Who's not here? If you look back in the show and you don't see a lot of scenes in the person's home, I don't think those people are showing their authentic self. What does Curtis do in the Dominican Republic? He told us it was a development deal, but that's that's all we know. We don't know anything. <laughs> What's so funny, Machine? Do you feel like it's time for you guys to get paid on the show? We are pivotal to the success of the show. Whether we're paid or not, whether we're in the Dominican Republic or in Atlanta, you know, like we're we're here, right? <laughs> You're my type of guy. <laughs> I want to talk about Quad. She's just not my favorite person in the world. Did you ask Toya whether or not she cheated on you with this guy? Well, well, do you feel like at the end of the day, it was wrong for Mariah to get kicked off the show she created. Only you and your relationship with the people who signed your check can get rid of it. There were some things going on behind the scenes that we had a chance to witness that wasn't pertinent. Look, I know you read things about your wife. People really are afraid that Toya is going to take you to the poorhouse. <laughs> look, look, Toya makes more money than I do right now. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, Phaedra is on the show. Or do you guys think she should stay on the show, go back to my housewife? I kept waiting for the boyfriend. I'm like, okay, when is the boyfriend coming around? Same thing with Quad. And Quad will tell you. I've been telling her from the beginning, like, hey, I know you don't want to show your guy, but we got to meet him. What does she say to that? She'd be like, they're not coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I wanted to give, I played that for insight because that was after this last recap that we're gonna be doing. And in the recap though, it kind of seemed like um, in the final reunion, it seemed like they might've left off in a better place than what was just said, than what was just said about like how Cecil's like, she's not my favorite person. Well, didn't Quad apologize to you for the 28th time at this reunion and you pretended to accept her apology? And then you go on Carlos's show 48 hours later and I'm like, she not my favorite person. She not my favorite person. That is so weird. I thought we were letting stuff go. Gina, Dr. Gina. Okay, so let's get into this recap, you guys. Thanks for coming through. Allie from Miami's in the house. That's right. Well, you know this uh, scene, it picked up with Apollo. He came out at the end of last scene. And um, he was talking about his, his freaking, um, you know, time in the, in the, in the um, brink. Isn't it called the brink? The clink, the clink. He was in the clink. And he was telling us about that. Um, and he has brought out because, you know, Toya was dropping little shade against the family dynamic of Phaedra and Apollo throughout the season, even though they have been directed to not bring that stuff up. And yeah, the slammer, the slammer, the clink, the slammer, the, uh, yeah, solitary confinement, the whole incarcerated the new slave plantation anyway never mind i'm sorry you guys i'll stop okay so when toya had interjected um a, at the party and she kept bringing up little slidey shady stuff about the family dynamic of phaedra phaedra decided to shut her down by bringing apollo to the stage and apollo was telling him about their co-parenting and everything. And like timing heals everything. He know he's not allowed into the house, but they are working on co-parenting. And he did drop a couple of jail words in the wrong place. You know, when you use the big word that you just learned, but it's not exactly in the right place in the sentence. Cause he said something like it was very immaculate, which could go there, but immaculate usually in most people's meanings has to do more with like cleanliness and stuff. So he was like, yeah, we're doing immaculate right now, but it also does mean wonderful. So it just depends on which line and the definition you go to. Um, and then 
Dr. G was um, the thing about Dr. G asking Phaedra for the $400. Now look, I could see a person like Dr. Gross who obviously doesn't have a lot going for him other than he's a doctor and Quad reminded us that even Toya didn't um, know that somebody didn't want him until he was a doctor. Oh, that was for Gina and Toya. Okay, wrong one. Um, but Dr. Gross, he had told his two new girlfriends that the only reason he's not with Phaedra is because she needed $4,000 a month and he couldn't afford Order, basically like she was hoeing herself for $4,000. And then Apollo was like, so basically she told you that this is how much it takes to be her. And if you're not matching that, then why should she play? And he's like, yeah. So man speak man, but when man speak woman, it was to make Phaedra a hoe. But when man speak man, it was, she was checking your pockets. She wanted to know what was in your wallet, Dr. Gross. And you obviously were sub- par to what she the standard that Phaedra had set for herself you were below that standard and she was letting you off the hook graciously because one thing about Phaedra she might burn a bridge with a woman but she doesn't seem to be burning these bridges with men like that right so she seems to have left this bridge with Dr. G that she's been able to cross and go over and she's probably had some nice networking opportunities from that mutual relationship and some other things because she did not totally just humiliate him and shut him down, even in this moment, the way that he could have been done. Because you can't go around Atlanta telling everybody for years that I asked you for $4,000 and the only reason I'm not with you is because you didn't have it, fool. You ba you're besmirching my good name and reputation. Okay, so that's, that's in my opinion. I don't know. And then for him to say it in front of his new wife and she was making all kinds of excuses for it in the lives she's been doing since then, you guys, when people are asking her, what were your thoughts? And she's like, oh, well, he's, I asked him what he meant by that. Sweet and sour said that she asked Dr. Gross what he meant by that. And he basically told Sweet Tea that Phaedra was lying, y'all. So he's still keeping up this farce with Sweet and Sour that Phaedra would have been down for it, even though it was all cleared up in that moment. Anyway, anyway. So Toya and Eugene's relationship was on the table and they were um, discussing when they dated in high school. That's when Quad joked that Toya wasn't interested in Eugene Gina's ass until she found out he was a doctor because Toya also has standards. Look, there's nothing wrong with having standards. We got to set high standards or else we'll fall for anything, right? So she set some standards. She she wanted to drink the most expensive everything and she wants the most expensive everything. And she wants this man with the, with the that's a doctor, not a nurse. Bam. And um, then we had to get into some more apologizing from Quad. Now, Eugene has said some not nice things about Quad. I've yet to hear an apology from Eugene towards Quad. Yet, even if he, if he was only responding to what Quad said in response to what she heard from Anila and Carrie Wells in relationship to the robbery at Anila's house and all of that stuff in the contractor and the sleeping around in the neighborhood. And he had some very strong opinions about our girl Quad. And just like you saw, he doesn't like her. He just doesn't like her, you guys. He just doesn't like her. But she's required to apologize who just, uh, who just doesn't like her without any apology back, mind you. At least they could have faked it and made him apologize back. But no, here she is on the skewer again for calling him Eugina. And nobody would have been calling Toya, I'm calling her the day drinker. Nobody would have been calling the day drinker's husband anything had we not seen you chop off his willy and toss it in your purse for kicks on national TV every time you emasculate this man. And we understand now, and I've said for years, that it must be part of your kink. I'm positive Gina's way of getting moist for the day drinker 
is for her to emasculate him and to humiliate him. He has some kind of humiliation kink ritual thing that he likes. He might like to get a, now I'm not sure if he's in the golden showers or what you guys, but it's definitely some type of, he, like he said to Carlos, I knew what I was getting into. She was like this when I married her. I love it. I love having biscuits thrown at me on TV and the size of my penis being up for fodder on national TV. I love it. So if he loves it and the day drinker implements it, then how is it that Quad is responsible for what we're all thinking? Hello? And I believe that what you, um, they said at one time, Mariah was the originator of Eugenia. They said at one time that you, that Mariah was allegedly the author of the nickname Eugenia for Eugene. And when he gets in women's business, people want to assign body parts to him that fit women. So they made him Eugenia. And I'm just breaking it down to Gina. So anyway, I did not appreciate, I do not appreciate when melanated women have to run after these men and apologize to them without the same um, accommodation being given to the women. That's not fair. Quad should have got an equally implicit, I'm sorry for all the stuff I've been saying about you, Quad, I'm sorry too. But no, they have to make this black woman grovel all over our freaking screen. For what? For Gina? Who likes handing his, his freaking balls to the day drinker to toss in her purse? No, it needs to be reciprocal. It needs to be, where's everybody's accountability? Why has this entire season been about one melanated goddess taking accountability for what white people did, for what the black people did, for what everybody else has did, but we're gonna put it all on quad. Okay, okay, okay. It's not okay, but okay. So Dr. G did say that he trusts his wife even though, um, you know, she said that she wanted access to the money. No, he didn't get a prenup, all that stuff. He said the weird stuff about the quad. And now we're gonna get over here to um, the drama on Hilton Head because this part is interesting. Surround Sound and Freak Nick. Now we know post-production from Quad in her Patreon interview with Dr. Heavenly, that Quad had gone to production and asked them to not put this in, not put that in, and that it was ignored. She alleges that various cast members were approached by um, production were approached by production to bring up various topics. And I've been going through their social medias, you guys. The only people who ever post pictures with production on this cast so far that I've been able to see are um, Freak Nick and Surround Sound. And the whole Hilton Head thing came up because production was like, let's go to Freaknik. I mean, let's go to Hilton Head. And allegedly, they had asked somebody else to host the trip and they were like, no. And Simone was like, yes. They had asked somebody else to bring up the tragedy that happened at Quad's house to her little angel. And the other person said no. And Simone said, yes, you guys. And this plays into my theory that surround sound is an op. She appears to be your friend, but she's really not. And this picture with her so buddy buddy with production also lends itself to my belief that she's the one, the main one who helped get Mariah off the show. 
Look, they're so buddy, buddy. Look at this. They're so happy. Look. And then the comment over here is when I tell you these guys don't play when it comes to married to medicine is surgical with putting this show together. Get the reference. Thank you for 10 years. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that while we continue to discuss this. Let's go here and then here. Because that's insightful into even this Hilton Head argument when, again, first Dr. Heavenly starts off and she gets real low. She's like, look, Simone, before you start yelling, I just want to say I wasn't being, I wasn't being malicious. And I didn't say that you were being malicious. I was just saying, consider Jackie's feelings. And of course, surround sound could not wait to try to over talk her because that's one thing surround sound does. She gets louder when your point is valid. She gets louder. Imagine it or not. I know Andy's ears know the truth I'm telling. She gets louder when you're getting ready to make a solid point. And so again, and I've been talking about how, isn't it interesting how Simone has zero problem with being the angry black woman? Zero problem with that portrayal of being the angry black woman in her actions and demeanor on this show with her loud abrasive behavior. And even Dr. Heavenly, who says harsh stuff, isn't as loud and abrasive or aggressive as Dr. Simone. Yet Dr. Simone continuously projects that image onto specifically Dr. Heavenly when by actions, Dr. Jackie, I mean, Dr. Simone, surround sound, is the main one who embodies the persona of aggressive, loud, angry black woman. And I'm very surprised that she, and, and then she's like, I'm loud and I own it, you know, but um, nobody ever really just calls her that. I'm calling her that. And I think she needs to have that toned down a little bit. I don't know that that does a service to her, but it's also her entire personality that we've seen. Now, when they were going back and forth about the Hilton Head fiasco, she was trying, um, Dr. Heavenly's initiated, I wasn't being malicious, Surround sound starts yelling about how you don't let her talk. You don't let her talk. You don't need to get into it. But then isn't that interesting that surround sound doesn't want Dr. Heavenly interjecting on Dr. Jackie's behalf, but surround sound has no issue interjecting on the day drinker's behalf. You see that? Did you catch that? So again, surround sound and the day drinker want everybody to do what they're not willing to do. So they can have an alliance where they talk for each other, stick up for each other and all of that stuff. But Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly can't have an alliance because that's wrong. And you're talking for her and that's your public puppet and she does everything and that's her mouthpiece and calling fake because we see you do that too Dr. Surround Sound and you said as much in your interview with Carlos King after your husband left you took your ass over there with your teeth and you sat over there and you said because I'm going to do that for my friend because I decided I did that when one of my friends is getting ganged up on, I'm gonna say something. And it's okay for you, but it's not okay for Dr. Heavenly. So again, no resolution right there. And then we get into sweet and sour, feeling like she's hazed by the group. And as it turned out, so she's, she lied and said she never watched the show before she got on, but she knew what three emojis in seven words to send to this cast man who she never saw on TV. So how did you know this fool wanted a baby, wanted to be married and wanted to be loved? How did you know that? If you never watched the show, Sweet and Sour, or did you watch the show? 
and you're just lying. I'm calling lying because I would never have known what three emojis and seven words to send to somebody on a TV show I never watched unless I watched it. So anyway, she starts talking about her relationship and she didn't feel the need to support Jackie when in Hilton Head, which is why she went off on her. Um, and that Jackie had handled Sweet Tea with a shady, with sh shady church behavior. Um, but you know what? Look, if she would have paid attention, she would have seen that all first year cast members get hazed. Dr. Heavenly went through it. Dr. Heavenly went through it and is still going through it. Audra went through it from Toya and is still going through it. I mean, no, she's not going through it no more because Toya went around collecting all the uh, alleged enemies of Dr. Heavenly so that she can have them on her team. Mm -hmm. She's stacking the deck over there. She's hanging out with Anila, Carrie Wells, um, Audra, Sweet and Sour, like just anybody who she feels is against those other people, that's who she's hanging out with. And she forgives them, but she's holding these black women's, these melanated people's feet to the fire. Yeah, that's just what I thought. I don't know. So then Sweet Tea and Heavenly round three. And she's like, I can give you what you want. I wanted to see that whole exchange Unfortunately, like the like the um, like the description for this video says, this entire reunion was very choppy, kind of like the season where it just felt incomplete and like more context was needed for what was said before and what was said after. Anyway, they got into a yelling match again, and sweet and sour again with her ageist comments. Sweet and sour again. I mean, look, you married a senior citizen. But you have the nerve to sit up here and call these ladies seniors like it's a diss, okay? When your man's balls, one is touching the water, I'm sure, or very close to the water. But you're sitting up here disrespecting these black women and trying to shame them about their age when your man might need a chassis belt for his balls to not touch the water when he's using the toilet. But that's okay. I'm not sure how it's okay. Um, Curtis did wish that the affair hadn't been brought up and he knew that they were gonna bring it up at their expense. And then they all tried to pretend like they wouldn't, but the, the eighth housewife should have did a flashback to how they were still talking about it. Um, let's see. Um, Dr. Alicia and Kimma, the knuckle dragger and sassy, they came out. And she, I loved her shade, her slow burn shade to Toya talking about, I don't talk about my husband's penis size. And then Toya pretended like somebody asked her about it. She said, nobody asked. Well, nobody asked you about Dr. G's not near person in the history of the United States of America has asked you, Toya Day Drinker Bush Harris, about your man's penis. I would like the eighth housewife to correct me if I'm wrong. because I don't remember that shit. I remember you blurting things out about this that nobody wants to think about. And now we keep on talking about it because you already brought it up. Um, and let's see, I wish we would have got the scenes from the fight at the, at the funeral home, but we didn't. And that was this little recap. Now I'm gonna do my little um, top topics. So the surround sound, like I said, she's an op for production. Anybody who's just coming in, surround sound, AKA Dr. P Pancakes, AKA Dr. Simone Whitmore is surround sound, named by the raindrops, BT dubs. I didn't make that one up. Is an op for production. She was asked about the Hilton Head thing. She went all in. She was asked about um, to bring up the tragedy at Quad's house. She went all in. I feel like surround sound, like Cecil said, they had 
They should have been off the show two seasons before the whole Tammy fiasco. In, in my opinion. Because Simone, I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys do you guys uh appreciate Simone's addition to the show? Or do you just are you kind of over her yelling and always feeling like she's right and all of that stuff? I don't know. You gotta feel like you're right when you're a doctor, but always. And then the day drinker. She's a wine troll, <clears throat> which is basically a tipsy box troll. And she's been demanding accountability from people that, but she never takes accountability, you guys. Never has she ever taken accountability. When I had Dr. Heavenly over here, I asked Dr. Heavenly myself, is Dr. has um, the day drinker ever taken accountability for anything? And she said, no. So I'm not sure how she's always head of, you better take accountability committee. That doesn't match. Okay. I don't like it. Now, sweet and sour and her, her day drinker powered battery pack. <laughs> yeah, I said it. That was a mouthful. I feel like that whole thing left her looking really challenged because she was just yelling at the wrong things, going off on the wrong people. And then it's so weird. Look at this, you guys. Look at this with me. So Toya forgave Anila. Toya forgave Carrie. And those two are the initiators of the rumors of the jail, I mean, of the break-in and the cheating rumors for Toya. They have yet to forgive Quad. They still mad at her right now today, 323, 2024. Sweet and Sour is just like her battery pack friend because she forgave Toya who body shamed her at her wedding dress fitting and Phaedra who body shamed her at her wedding dress fitting and is holding on to this bone with Dr. Heavenly who's never body shamed that bitch and is only asking logical questions. Like, are you sure you want to go through with this? You saying that he's just as controlling as his last wife. And he did trick you and tell you that he called the police, but really didn't. And he'd been playing head games with you and shit. And now you got to come up with $14,000 more to get married to this man. And you're very upset about it. Are you sure you need to get married tomorrow? That's all Dr. Heavenly was saying. And they took that and ran with it that she was attacking her not yet marriage and da 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 blah, blah, blah. Those are logical questions. And if your mama didn't help you ask those questions personally, sweet and sour, then you should be thanking Dr. Heavenly for asking the critical thinking kind of questions that she was asking. That was critical thought to say, is this a good idea? And then Sweet and sour be sitting up in her lives talking about, well, no marriage is perfect. We have our ups and downs. You're still and you're supposed to be in your honeymoon phase. But you got all kinds of problems. And Dr. Heavenly isn't one. It's all Dr. Gross. Anyway, and like I said, I liked Alicia's classy shade when she was telling um, Dr. Jean about that. Dr. Jackie... What, is she on the mute challenge? Is she on the damn mute challenge? Was she half asleep? She looked so startled when Dr. Heavenly was like, you're not gonna do nothing because Dr. Jackie gonna come over here and tell him to you. She gonna get up and handle you. And it looked like she got woke up in church, didn't it? She was like, oh, oh, oh. She, was, no, she knows how to sleep with her eyes open. That's a superpower, sleeping with your eyes open, Dr. Jackie. But you... Look, new rule, if you don't have nothing to say, you sit at the end of the couch. New freaking rule. And I love Dr. Jackie. I love Dr. Jackie. But new rule, if you are having nothing to say, then you don't get to sit in the front. You don't get to sit in the front. Well, what do you guys think about that? Because I wanted to hear more from Dr. Jackie. I wanted to hear from Dr. Jackie about the Hilton Head experience. I wanted to hear from Dr. Jackie about 
a number of things. I wanted to hear the apology that she did at length, but they cut all that stuff out, you guys. I'm not really sure why they made it look like Dr. Jackie is a mute challenge aficionado. I have no idea, but they did. Now, again, to me, Dr. Heavenly, the MVP. Last year, she was the MVP. I'm, every season the thing is over, I'd be like, girl, get some rest. I hope you get your back rest because you carried the freaking show. She is an epic ensemble cast member because she can take what she gives and she gives it so well. Everybody else's panties are in a bunch, but her trying to get people canceled, trying to get people brought up on HIPAA charges, making shit up, acting like, because you looked in my mouth, you can't talk about what I said between my legs, whatever. And I still feel like any woman that's going to send three emojis and seven words to a man where it involves you promising something with your womb, you need to make sure there's no cobwebs in your uterus before you problem, before you promise that. You need to make sure, or else be, if you get on a huge thing like on TV like this, then you're going to have people think that you were lying the whole time because not a lot of people make it to your age and not have maybe checked that out before you go around promising stuff. You know? So then... um yeah. So again, Dr. Heavenly's the realist. Now, quad, 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 quad. You know what really struck me with this whole quad thing was when Doc, when Andy, in front of quad, who had just asked production to not put in that whole tragedy scene that Dr. Simone made sure got on national television. After that, Andy turns to Dr. Gross and says, I want to do a mental health check with you. How is it being here today seeing Quad? Like Quad was the problem, you guys. I did not like that shit. He should have asked, Quad, how do you feel being here with your former abuser and his new wife and his new victim, allegedly? How do you feel being here with your former abuser and his new victim? That is something easily that Andy could have asked Quad. But instead, he's coddling Dr. Gross and his behavior and his reputation at the expense of Quad and her experience. Quad experienced this with her, with this man. He did not deny it on that stage, you guys. Dr. Heavenly confirmed that everything that Quad said she endured at the hands of Dr. G Gross was not denied by Dr. Gross. It was not. Silence is acceptance in many ways. And it was not aired. But that man's mental health was checked in on. Do you see that? We need to protect black women, especially dark berries. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And I did not like that one bit, Sam, I am. And I'm still not, not sure because again, after production, um, Dr. Surround Sound and the Day Drinker went on Carlos King after we saw that whole, um, after we saw that live that Quad posted with Yandy and Rashida and Drew Sedora and all of those beautiful melanated women celebrating Yandy's day of birth, twerking it till the wee hours of the morning, playing games, laughing, laughter. That was so much laughter. Oh my God. That's why they say laughter is medicine, you guys. It's the best medicine. It releases all kinds of things that heal. The frequency of laughter is healing. And that, I was having so much um melanated girl joy watching that live i went to each one the next day and i was watching it some more because it just felt so good to see authentic beautiful fun it was no drama nobody was like there was no competition it was beautiful 
And you know what the day drinker and surround sound got on Carlos's channel and said? And you know Quad hasn't even learned her lesson. She out there doing the same thing. She out there doing the same thing. Living her best life is what you're talking about, day drinker. Is living, is that melanated woman living her best life have so much effect on you, day drinker and surround sound? Why do you, why does she need to force herself to hang out with you guys who make her apologize for what white people did, who you forgive and hang out with right now, but you dragged her through the mud? And I still want to talk about how surround sound is the initiator of the contractor rumor with Quad. I hope they get into that season 11, along with the weekend jaunt to Tammy's. How about that? How about that? And then maybe we can start evening out some stuff. But yeah, I just want to thank again, um, Sassy and the ca uh, caveman or the knuckle dragger, surround sound and freak Nick, Dr. Gina and, and, um, and, yeah, Dr. Gina and the Day Drinker, and Heavenly and Dr. Daddy, Dr. Jackie and Dominican Republic, and Etel, thank you very much for a wonderful season because that's what it was. You guys shared your lives, not much got resolved, but it is what it is, and it was a great season. I really do think a weekend jaunt to Tammy's next season would be great to see how solid is the marriage between Cecil or AKA Freaknik and Simone, AKA Surround Sound, because also in the interview with Carlos, Simone said that there shouldn't have been a problem with Jackie going to um, Hilton Head if they had resolved it. And it's been so long. <clears throat> so, okay, same case in point for you, Surround Sound. Let's bring old girl back around and see how you couldn't even finish your book with Amorosa's help because you couldn't get past the chapter about Tammy's ass. But your friend was supposed to be over this? Really? Really? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And it's not intellectually honest to say those two statements. Let's get at these comments. I dropped the link in case anybody wants to come up. You know... Uh, the, it's over. Quad's having to make promises about being a better friend. Kiss some more ass to get in this group. I wouldn't. Ooh, I would be so resentful if I was Quad. Because why should I have to kiss your ass to be in this friend group? And I shouldn't have to hang out you, with you for 365 days out of the year. Real friends? I don't, I don't even have to see your ass for three years at a time. I, and we can pick up the phone and start the conversation where we left it. Real friends? If you call me in the middle of the night, even though I haven't seen your ass in 12 months and your husband needs a ride home from jail and I'm the closest in the vicinity and you at home with the babies, I'm going to go get that fool and drop him off at your house and we still don't have to talk again for another year. I got friends like that in my life and I consider them friends to this day because we know each other and we understand that we don't have to always talk to each other and be around each other in order for us to understand that our relationship is solid and you can count on me. But when you're insecure, like Toya admitted, she was insecure about having to wear those Powerade shoes. And I feel like Toya specifically, his entire existence is based off of an insecure little girl who had to wear Powerade shoes. Because that's how insecure people act. I got to see you to know what you're thinking. I got to see you. You know, or else I won't know. You have to put yourself around me. Or else I won't know. That's insecure. In my opinion, I don't know. I don't know everything, you guys. Let's go to these comments. Let's see. Don't believe any. Okay, here we are. So production was wrong for that niece comment. That was disgusting. I'm going to be quiet about the Hilton head, but you don't have to be. I mean, I don't know. Some people think that she should have been over it. Other people think it was very insensitive. All I know is that Simone didn't come out of pocket for that trip, y'all. So for her to be complaining about money couldn't blah, blah, blah. 
Yes, it could. It wasn't your money. Let's see. I never believe anything Simone says either. Andy Shady is asking if she speaks to her patients. And now I wanted to know the same thing. Actually, Zelina, I've been asking the same thing. I'm like, because if you're not, that means you know how to turn it off. That means you know who to get aggressive with and who not to get aggressive with. That means you only let your angry, aggressive, loud black lady persona out with certain people. Okay. Yes. And I call her teeth. She always talking about Dr. Heavenly and dentures or whatever. Bitch. We know you sucked your thumb until you were five from that overbite. We know it. Surround sound. I, I have, have an issue with Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone. Then that interview Toya and Dr. Simone was boring. Cecil and G were better, which was surprising. Yes. They did bully her. T-I-M-O. Hey, I appreciate your opinion. And to her, she felt bullied. Now, look, we can go technical, but the, the word bully, that's not what she experienced. That's not what she experienced. I feel like she experienced hazing and put 28 on it and turned it into bullying. You gotta be careful with the word bully. Let's let's take a look at the word bully. You know me and I love etymology. Everybody should look into the etymology of the word black, which means pale, lacking color, white. Did you guys know that? But let's get into bully. Bully. Okay, I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna share it. Uh -uh, I'm gonna share it, I'm gonna share it. Because people be using all kinds of words. I love a good word. So a bully is a person who habitually seeks to harm. There was no harm, no foul. Intimidate. That wasn't intimidation. It was just logical, critical thinking questions. Those who they perceive to be vulnerable. In my opinion, and you know who really bullied Sweet Tea? Was her battery pack Toya. Because she kept putting her in positions to pipe up at times when it wasn't pipe up time. It was STFU time. Okay, as a verb, you seek to harm, humiliate, coerce someone who is perceived as vulnerable. We can see some more. Let's see, is it going to let us see some more? There we go. Oh, did you know? Uh, okay. Bully can also, it's one of those words. Bully can also mean very good and excellent, you guys. Yep, it can also mean very good and excellent. Uh, sometimes we had a bully corned beef. It's a form of beef. But I don't think that they, that she was habitually harmed, intimidated, because of her vulnerable state, I think she was done that because she was a noob. And that's just what everybody does. It's called hazing when it's a noob. Let's see, let's look at the word hazing. Hazing, 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 hazing. Hazing refers to any activity that is a condition upon recruitment, admission, affiliation, or continued participation in a group that humiliates, degrades, abuses, or engage, endangers someone regardless of consent or a person's willingness to participate. Okay, yeah, hazing is a little worse, but that's definitely what she went through because it was kind of like a rite of initiation and because she was recruited into this show. And like Dr. Heavenly points out, she had to go through it. I don't think that... Uh, Toya ever had to go through it. Simone never went through it. Dr. Jackie never went through it. Contessa never even really went through it. But um, Heavenly has gone through it. And now by proxy, Sweet and Sour has gone through it. And like I said, Audra went through it. Um, I didn't see Alicia get any hazing. Did you guys? Um, who else got hazed? Wasn't there like a one and done season, girl? Yeah. Yeah, so she has got haze before. Let's see. I appreciate that. Let's see. Okay. I like we did that etymology. Jackie, um, 
you know, Jackie just says everything so prim and proper. I think it does come off as condescending and she can be condescending and condescending, immature. They're all everything. She hangs out with, oh yes, Toya, who was on Audra's ass, who she almost fought at that house, who Audra was like, this is your tax history. Yes, Toya and Audra hang out. And they all sit around and make everybody else a problem, I'm sure. Audra should have got a season two. I think so, too. I miss Audra. I still follow her on Instagram. Her baby's growing up greatly. Um, it's too many cast members at the reunion. Um, I don't know. What do you... I mean, they all had to show up. I just wish more would have said anything. Cough, cough, Dr. Jackie. Yes, when your balls are touching the water, it's a sign of age. Curtis should have kept it in his pants, period. I still don't understand why that was brought up. Look, I don't either. Day drinker Toya Bush hair. Yes, perfect name. She is, she is. Toya can be very annoying. You catch how Toya claimed the guys bully Dr. G. Oh yeah, so that part. They're like, um, and that's the other thing. So after the season is ended, Simone and the day drinker went on Carlos's channel and basically continued the narrative that Dr. Damon cheats on Dr. Heavenly, you guys, and has cheated on Dr. Heavenly, and that the men bullied Dr gross into saying he didn't know for sure whether he had or not. I don't like that narrative being done by these women. That's one thing that Dr. Heavenly has never done is attack your marriage. She asked the viable question before you married that gross ass, but afterwards she's not saying shit. But these ladies go on various platforms and continue the implication that the solid marriage isn't solid and that they're not showing their whole life because they're not sharing when they know for a fact that in Dr. Heavenly's case in particular, all, all of her family shots end up on the cutting room floor. So she has to give us drama in other ways so that she even makes it to the freaking camera because or else they leaving it all on the floor. You want Dr. Jackie off. I don't, I want her off if she's not going to say nothing. I don't mind a staple. I don't mind an anchor, especially one that's not loud and yelling and aggressive and angry and working as an opposition for freaking production against the betterment of melanated excellence. So Jackie can stay if she's going to speak up more. If Jackie doesn't want to participate, then maybe, yes, she should be off the thing. Because, look, I'm, I need more words. I need more interactions from her. I need way more. And I'm going to need her to step up for my girl, Dr. Heavenly, way more, too. Way more in words and actions. Because even her, when she does her little confessionals and stuff, a lot of stuff is at Heavenly's expense and that's supposed to be your girl. And we see you, Dr. Jackie. I think the Tammy storyline was fake to stay on the show. No, it was actually real C. Patterson. So Cecil did admit in the interview with Carlos that him and Tammy were friends before him and um, Simone. And here we go. Him and Tammy were friends before him and Simone. And that it wasn't a problem until it was a problem. And that when it became a problem, he was given an ultimatum. He was given an ultimatum. And did you know that Cecil had moved out? He had actually chose Tammy in a way because his ultimatum was her or me. And he, he moved out, you guys. That's why they had two houses that season. They had the North house and the South house was because they were separating because of the whole Tammy thing. And he had picked a side. 
And so that wasn't a fake storyline. Uh, the part I feel is fake is why you wait till you got on the show for it to be an issue. And the way that Dr. Surround Sound is always saying things like, oh, Dr. Heavenly's a follower, an ass kisser. She listens to what the people say in the blogs and then changes her mind accordingly. But what it seems like to me happened, Dr. Surround Sound, and you admit it on Carlos's show, is that people started saying things, little comments about, oh, well, why did he go rush over there? And oh, should he really be friends with that? And that made her look at it different. And then it became a problem. So she was the one that was heavily influenced by the comments of the public and others in that particular relationship. But here we go again, projecting it over there. Al, yeah, she was a mess. I'm surprised Dr. Gina is still into her. It must be the looks, right? You know, Dr. Heavenly went hard on T. Yeah, she did. And she, uh, but she did go hard on T. And T went equally hard. T pretended like she was tit for tat, like she could give it to and da 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 da. But she wasn't ready for this. She wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. Toya mentioned that they took everything for Jean to not say something about what she knows about the cheating rumors. Toya became. Whoa, wait, wait. Toya mentioned that it took everything for Gene not to say something about what he knows about the cheating rumors. Toya, yes. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Again, so why is it taking everything for Gina to not say something against this other black man's marriage when your problem is that these people have supposedly said something about your marriage. So you even saying that it takes everything for your husband to STF you about these rumors is further implication that there's a rumor. You see how it's all underhanded? At least what Quad said was to your face or at least what Anila said was to your face and what Quad repeated was to your face. It wasn't no implied nothing, <clears throat> which in a way can be more harmful because when you come straight out with the rumor, you can debunk it. But when it's just implications constantly dripping, 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 it sours your overall perception of the other person because you always have that in the back of your mind. Exactly, who's cheating? I don't love anyone who is a parakeet for the clear people and how they talk about black people and their pain and having pain is disgusting to me. Yeah, a parakeet for clear people. Well, that's what Toya's doing. Toya forgave clear people, i.e. Anila and Carrie. And they're all sitting around talking about black people, which is uh, Quad and her pain of her niece it is disgusting didn't jackie say that it took years for the four a woman knows my friend learned yes it does take years and sweet and sours in her 30s and you start having your period down there and sometimes when you have um bloody uh periods that are you know, in debilitating. I used to have girls in my high school who knew they had endometriosis and that was why they, they got excused from every PE activity because it was heavy, painful, you know, periods and all kinds of stuff, but it can also take years. I guess it depends on your insurance, huh? Dr. Heavenly is the only one that brought T and Dr. G back. Yeah. She's the one. Her, actually it was Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Jackie. The two people Sweet and Sour turned on was the people who asked her about being on the show. I laugh every time you say, I know, right? Day drinker. She is. It's like day drinker. Quad had a choice to come back. Yes, she did have a choice. She wants to keep her house payments. And look, I don't know what's wrong with people wanting to work in this economy. Yeah. Did you see Quad on Watch What Happens Live? She made an interesting statement when asked three things to say nice about Sweet Tea's. No, I didn't see. She said number two. What was it? Somebody tell me. Tell me, Mademoiselle. 
Quad said, it's good Dr. G can sleep with someone who is older. Dang, I'm going to go back and watch it. I'll go back and watch it. It's in my peacock. Yes. What was number two? Oh my gosh, we're going to go back and watch it. It's the same, Larja. Heavenly did too much. She hurt that lady's feelings. The whole cast played a part. Yeah, so why is Dr. Heavenly the first one mentioned? If the whole cast plays a part, then Heavenly did too much, but they all played a part. That implies that one is more than the other. And I think body shaming a girl in her wedding dress is way more harmful than asking at a bachelor party, do you think this is the right move when you just got that news? How is that too much? Sweet Tea is a big girl and she needs to respect her elders and not take this so seriously. She's on a TV show and she needs to handle the heat. She's going to have to learn how to either ignore the comments or handle them. Look, Dr. Heavenly has been Hayes. You guys keep posting her. And then Sweet Tea posted Dr. Heavenly's fat picture all over and, and Heavenly learned, knows how to laugh at herself though. So is it wrong that Heavenly knows how to laugh and she can still dish it? Because there are other people who are always talking smack, but they can't dish it out. Okay? That's the what we need to do. Sweetie, come in like a girl who's on sorority click, nothing new. She was bullied. She was hazed. And that, yep, she's she was. She was. People have been unalive through hazing. Well, not on this show. That's extreme. Um, sorry. She was not bullied. I don't think she was bullied either. I'll take hazing. And even though, and you're right, hazing can get out of out of hand. Um, but hey, Freak Nick. Freak Nick and surround sound. So this is a picture that was in Freak Nick. Was it this one? This is the one that starts freaking the Freak Nick documentary off, you guys. Did you guys watch Freak Nick last night? Me and my husband watched it. It was so good. Oh my gosh. I love Black Joy. Until it wasn't, it went down. Ooh, damn, damn, damn. Ooh, it went down. But this is picture is in the first five minutes of Freak Nick and that's Cecil and somebody. And then this is Cecil and Simone with her asymmetrical Bob. Remember that, um, let's got not, not get dramatic. It's a TV show. In the interview, Dr. Simone doubled down and said she heard Quad said, stop. Yeah, and she still doubled down. Yep. Is it TV show? Yeah, it's a TV show. It is all a TV show, you guys. People who shout like Dr. Simone generally have a hearing impediment. <laughs> I don't know, but she doesn't shout all the time. So I kind of feel like it's a personality issue and not a uh, hearing issue in her case. Because Andy said, do you talk like this to your patients? And she doesn't. So it's her choice to act with people this way. I remember the North House and the South House. I also remember her voice was with Cecil at the South House. Hello. Because that's where it's fun. They don't get yelled at there. I don't think I could handle my husband being so close to a woman, right? Hey, I, I'm i not. Everyone has was on Heavenly to get off the platform. And then as time she got on, that's what my point is, Flora. And that was my point when they had that intervention because when they had the intervention, they have been doing lives talking a gang of shit about Dr. Heavenly, a gang of shit. And every time she answered on her platform with more viewers, that's what the problem was. On their life, they would have like 57 people, 103 people, you know? And then on Dr. Heavenly's life, she's getting, she had 100,000 people on her platform and she's reaching thousands of viewers in live time and then making the shade room and neighborhood talking everywhere else. So they were freaking haters. And that's what I've been saying. They've been hating this whole time. How do you complain about something and then you indulge in it unless you're a hater? Colonize much? Gentrify much? I'm not sure which one she did, but that's haterism. Your husbands and you 
all take to the same exact streets that you complained about and had an intervention for. And then you go and make her move behind the paywall where I calculated her current monthly haul is at least five G's. So now when Sweet and Sour says you strange for super chat change, she's strange for super chat change. She not strange for super chat change. No more. She's $5,000 on a, a payroll prepaid and growing. Thank you. And still coming to YouTube. Is she going to be with YouTube on Mondays with Carlos? And they're going to continue the Messy Monday re, um, recaps on his channel. And then she's going to do stuff on her channel also. So she's still getting paid. You see how you never win when you play dirty? You never win when you play dirty. There's And look. I'm always saying it. There's enough room in these YouTube streets for everybody. If you had a creative bone in your body instead of hater bones in your body, surround sound and day drinker, then you would have just came over here and made your channel too and tried to grow it authentically. But you just want to go around to other people's platforms and talk your stuff because nobody drops into your lives. And that's proof because the other day when Dr. Heavenly went live after she found out Simone in the day drinker was talking all gang of shit on Carlos's thing, she takes her over to the Cheesecake Factory wherever they have for lunch once in a while. And Dr. Heavenly said, the people told me you was talking about me. Is that true? And Simone is like, well, I was mad, but I love your boopies. And she kept taking the phone from Dr. Heavenly to engage with the people you guys, because she really wants fans. She really wants to interact with fans. She really does. So she goes around to where fans are and interacts with them. But then behind their back, she talks trash about them. And then she gets on their live and untalk and tries to untalk trash about them, but she never really cleans it up. And is you go everywhere talking trash. You never take accountability for it. I feel like Dr. Simone needs to go. Logic Curves, I'm talking about how Dr. Jackie and how she does not believe black women and their pain. Oh, look, I, I, that was taken. She's already explained that 28 times. I'm not here to rewrite history. We heard what she said on Dr. Heavenly's thing. We also heard what she said is her rebuttal to it. We also know that in, in, she doesn't feel that way personally. She was making a statement about how we're viewed and the things that are said in relation to how we're in the medical community. And is she has every right to say what she feels as a doctor, she's experienced some things. I don't think that she was saying she doesn't believe women. I think that she was saying that some people play with their stuff. I'm not here to rewrite history. We all heard what she said. I watched that live in real time. And when she said those words in real time, my ears did not bleed. I followed her logic in real time during that talk. It was harsh, it was abrasive, and it was something that she said. I'm not here to, um, I'm not here to undo it. And I'm not here to argue with anybody who feels that was a horrible statement. We all, we've all gotten treated black before. If you're a black person in this thing, a melanated person in here, then you've been treated black when you went to the doctors. And we know exactly what Dr. Jackie was talking about. So for her to articulate it does not make her the problem. We've all had that experience. And rarely is it talked about. At least she got the conversation started on a huge platform. Did you hear? Yes, suing Shannon for $75, 75000 dollars for her facelift. Yes, he is trash. Super trash. Hater, just trying to stop people's back. That's what I that's what I feel. Take her to a Zeline Turner, that's right. But you need to find a physician that will listen to you. And that the problem today. Not enough physicians are listening to their patients, i.e. Dr. Jackie. 
But then Dr. Jackie shouldn't be on anyone's task force for the White House. She can be where she wants to be. Look, one comment does not negate 20 years of excellence. So one comment negates 20 years of excellence for people. I don't let it. I'm not going to let five minutes on a YouTube live negate everything that Dr. Jackie has added to moving forward, black women giving birth in a healthy way. Nobody, I'm not going to let it happen. That was a comment. Everybody makes mistakes. How about that? How about she apologized and move on? How about that? How about she, her patients are thriving today? How about that? One statement does not a life make. And as a matter of fact, I feel like her having the White House task force helps her get that message out even on a huger platform so it doesn't keep on happening. We could let, we could have room for that. Or we could make her the new quad and just send her on an apology tour for 85 years and everything that she ever did that was good is donezo. All the babies that have been birthed because of her in a safe environment is donezo. All of the women that have been listened to at her office are null and void because that statement that she made. Or we can have compassion and forgiveness and move on we find compassion and forgiveness for a whole lot of people when we want to. Or we get stakes out and nails out and pin them to a cross and then burn it. We can do whatever we want. I'm not going to make Dr. Jackie a villain for saying exactly what happens to black people in this in the in the medical thing. I'm not. She's not the villain. Not in my opinion. She has good specialists that sees you girls with these type of issues. Um, for me, it negates everything. Great. I wouldn't go to her if I was pregnant for sure. Look, that's excellent. I appreciate that. And that is why we have a world and everybody has an opinion and a heart and a mind of their own so that they can make these choices for themselves and that they can decide for themselves what's the right thing and wrong thing for them to do. And I'm positive that Dr. Jackie's business has not failed at all, even in spite of the comments that she got caught making on Dr. Heavenly's channel. I'm pretty sure she's still thriving. And I'm pretty sure all the women that she has helped are very thankful still to this day that there was a Dr. Jackie in their life. I love you too, Mademoiselle. Yes, yes, this is the only time. And we, that's the beauty of us. We don't always have to agree. And we still get to love and respect each other because that's what the world is about. You find out what works for you. You find out what doesn't work for you, what resonates, what doesn't, what vibration is frequencying on you and what twin isn't. And in this particular case, I'm choosing to choose. I'm choosing a frequency that you're not choosing and we still love each other. And I still value your opinion. Okay. So thank you for that, Mademoiselle. Um, and thank the people for the season. The season. I always love going on the side for the patient to be heard. I don't care who the physician is. Yes, definitely. And people definitely, look, if you have a doctor and you're not feeling heard, change doctors. If they're black, if they're Chinese, if they're white, if they're Indian, if they're Hindu, if they're Japanese, if they're Russian, if they're German, if they're whatever, if they're Nigerian. If you're not feeling heard by your doctor, get another one. And that's your responsibility. If you're not feeling heard by a doctor and you stayed with that doctor, then you did yourself a disservice because you don't have to stay nowhere. You can go back to your insurance, pick a new, look who's taking new, new patients and pick another provider. You can go back to your insurance after that. If that person didn't listen to you right, Pick another provider. 
okay? You can opt in and out of different networks so that you can get to the provider that you will feel the most heard and represented by and who's advocating for your optimal health at all times. That's your prerogative. Uh, Curve CK gave you a shout out. Oh my gosh, while waiting for Marlo yesterday. Oh yeah, he's like, Logic Curves is in here. Logic Curves is in here. I was like, here I am. Yeah, he did. He's been giving me a couple shouts out. I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to add it to my new intro. That was so cool. Uh, I heard Jackie has a lot of bad reviews. Yeah, she got a lot of bad reviews after all of this. And thanks to Buffy Purcell, allegedly, who's and Mariah Carey, uh, Mariah not Carey Huck. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, when people have you in their crosshairs, they will find what they need. They will find what they need. And we all know that Buffy Purcell has a cross to bear with Dr. Jackie. She was so thrilled to get that on, on the thing. And she's still trying to bring up the HIPAA stuff, even though Dr. Teeth over here is the one that told her business. I just changed the doctor. Yes, exactly, Zeline. Everybody do what Zeline does. Change that doctor. Demand your second opinion. You're a human. If that, you remember you used to go into the doctor's office and they would warm their hands up and then they'd listen to your heart and listen to your, they don't even touch you no more. They don't even look in your eyes and your ears no more, right? And then they're like, oh, go take this medicine. You tell them what's happening. They're like, oh, here. And they write you a prescription and they say, go take this. And they didn't even touch you. So get a new doctor. I was, um, Zeline Turner, it was a huge contradiction for me on a task force, but then saying you think black women are faking this. Look, and so, that is a huge contradiction um, to a lot of people. And that can be a continued problem for her to have to get over. Who's the beautiful Marlo we're seeing off Bravo? I know, right? I liked Marlo on Bravo. And I like her in there with uh, Carlos King. They're going to be reviewing Bold and Bougie and giving her fashion tips. And she just seems so at ease and at peace and beautiful. And just really in her element when she's not under attack by other ladies. Like... Um, and when she's in a place where she's appreciated, I feel like Marlo's the kind of person that can thrive and Carlos appreciates her for sure. So I had dropped the link. None of you guys have anything to add. And I am feeling very complete on this season. We don't have to talk about this season. Never no more again, unless I kept happen to catch these people to keep on talking trash in the lives in the YouTube streets and the little lives on Tic Tac and in the IGs and stuff like that. If I catch those, you know, I'll bring them to my curvies. In the meantime, I hope you appreciated this review. I hope you enjoyed the season of Married to Medicine. I hope that, you know, like we're talking about, we you're looking for physicians that respect you, that listen to you, and that you feel complement your health journey to optimal health. And that's your that's your duty. Okay, so it is a doctor's duty to listen, and it's your duty to make sure that if you're not feeling heard, you find one that is. Okay. Um I changed doctors until I was satisfied with team that works. Yep, medical care is too pricey. To, yes, to be contempt. Yes. All oh, right, on. Thanks, Satra. I appreciate you for coming through. Um, then for Dr. Jackie to question someone, even if they are faking it, what business is it of hers if I want a day off? Hey, you're right about that. I, I had a great black doctor that I was at right after my pregnancy. My my lady, I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't even know. She's like, girl, do you need some time off? I was like, yeah. She's like, here, where's your note? Let me write you this little note. So you can get all kinds of doctors. You can get some that listen, some that don't. Like I said, it's your responsibility. Your health is technically your responsibility. They're the doctor, but your health is your responsibility. Okay? Heavenly gave them a storyline so they could should shush i agree i hope she gets a nice rest and massage for her back 
I told another black female doctor to, I told, I told her another black female doctor, you haven't touched me, check in my issues and said it was due to my age. Went to another and found the problem was genuine. You see that shit? You see that shit? That's because you were proactive in your health also, Celine. You didn't just sit around and be upset about it. You listened to your body, to your intuition, which is our body. And you went with that instead of what this so-called air quote professional was telling you, you know, and that is kudos and more people need to take more control like that because doctors don't know everything. And even when they tell us something is wrong, they don't know everything. You know what I'm saying? So be sure you get that second opinion and do what your intuition is also telling you guys to do. I love my curvies. I love you. We appreciated the married to medicine season. Smash my like button, smash the subscribe button on the way out. If you haven't already, go ahead and ring my bell, ring my bell. So you can get notified next time I upload a video. And so you can become part of this beautiful, curvy community that we're growing over here in the YouTube streets. You go out and have a wonderful day. Be great. There's enough to go around. So go get some. See you in the next video, curvies.